So in the last video we talked about building simple functions in Python which did return a value and I showed you how to call functions as well and they're sort of very simple functions, they didn't really do anything very special, they just did a simple mathematical calculation. So now in this video I'm going to try and build on that a little bit more and show you how you can build a slightly more complex function in Python and when you can do that you, you can build sort of much more powerful applications and it's just going to sort of add to your toolkit of being able to use uh, you know different bits of Python uh, to accomplish more sort of tasks when you're building more complex applications. So let's go ahead and jump straight into Python and you can see um, I've got this functions.py file open, this is the file from the last video. So let's define a new function, I'm going to call it uh, square area and what this function is going to do is it needs to take a side length and then it's going to use that in its calculation to calculate the area of the square. So to be able to do this I need that value, I need the value of the side length. Now I could say uh, side length is equal to uh, 5 for example and then we could say area is equal to side length uh, raised to the power of 2 and then return area. So that's one way of doing it and I'm just going to save this and run it to show you that that does work, that it will calculate the area of a particular square of side length 5. So we can run this and without any parameters it's going to work, it's going to return the value 25. But there's a way of making this function much much more powerful and that's because instead of hard coding this by saying that the side length is always equal to 5 I'm going to take this and make the side length what's called a parameter so I'm going to put side length inside these brackets and then whenever I call square area now if I save it and run it I have to specify the side length because if I try to run the function without specifying that I will get an error and it says uh, missing one, requi one required positional argument side length and that's because it is required you can't not put it in otherwise the function won't be able to calculate the area of the square because it doesn't know what you know what size the square is it doesn't know what the side length is so that is of course going to cause an error so what we can do is specify that parameter and I'm just going to say 6 and there you go, it says 36. So that would be the area of the uh, particular square that we're trying to calculate. So that's really good and it works now. So let's go ahead and let's do another example. Let's do a uh, rectangle uh, perimeter. So what we're going to need for this is we're going to have the width and the height of the rectangle and then we're going to say perimeter is equal to width times 2 plus the height times 2 and then we can return the perimeter. So that's another example and we're just going to take the width and the height this time so we can have as many parameters as we want in the function it doesn't matter there's no limit to it and if we had you know multiple sort of parameters here and it was getting quite long what we can also do is put a comma and then press enter and we can keep putting parameters on on this sort of new line so that's a good way of doing it if you've got lots of parameters and that's you know making it a very very long line uh, because that's obviously something that you don't want so I'm just going to go ahead and run this to make sure it works unfortunately I did put quite a long function name so I'll just type this out again uh, and so it wants me to specify a width and a height now so let's do four comma 5. So that was that would be how you call the function with two parameters. So we get 18, which is 
correct, it's what we'd expect from the perimeter of the rectangle with uh, side lengths 4 and 5 respectively for the width and the height. So now let's talk about default parameters. Default parameters mean that you don't necessarily have to specify 4 and 5. It means that you know you can call a function without any parameters if you want to and it'll still be able to output a result. So let's go back to this square area example and we can say we can specify default by just saying side length is equal to 5. So what that's going to do is specify you know if this function has not been called with a default value we're going to assume that the side length is 5 and we won't get an error so we're still going to run the function and it's still going to work. So now let's go ahead and we'll call square area without any parameters i.e. Th uh, things in the brackets and it works so it's assumed that it's 5 the side length is equal to 5 and now it's been able to perform that calculation so that's a way of being able to use default values in a function and remember these these values can be any, any sort of data type that you want so it doesn't just have to be an integer it could be uh, true for example or it could be a string uh, hello or whatever you want it to be uh, as long as this calculation uh, sort of assumes that so if this is a string then you might get you know a different sort of result so that is just one thing to be mindful of in Python but other than that I think we've covered some really really useful bits of information to do with functions and you should now have a much better understanding of being able to implement a function and you know manipulate those parameters within that function to do more complicated things like calculate the area of shapes or do geometry or you know string manipulation or whatever you might want to do it's very versatile you know because any of the code that you can write in a function uh, is the same as you can write outside the function so thanks for watching in the next one we're going to talk a little bit more about data types and in particular python lists and you know that sort of thing with indexes and stuff like that so I'll see you in the next video